Big news tonight from New York. Governor Andrew Cuomo has signed an executive order to appoint a special prosecutor for cases involving civilians killed by police. New York State Attorney General Eric Snyderman will serve in this role. The mothers of victims of police violence appeared alongside Governor Cuomo as he signed the measure, an important step towards holding police accountable. Joining me now is New York Governor Andrew Cuomo. First of all, Governor, thank you for being here tonight. Thank you for having me, Rev. And uh, I, I want to say I, I would have been there. I'm in Washington, D.C. I would have been at the press conference. You and I have talked back and forth on the phone, and I've worked on this issue. And I think as a national model, I'm in Washington, D.C., hosting National Action Network's Capitol Hill uh, conference. But I think that this is the first that I've seen that begins to take the politics out of local counties and, and the, the perceived conflict of interest many have. Doesn't mean police are guilty or innocent, but it means it raises the level of taking away any appearances of a conflict. I think this can be a national model, Governor. Explain exactly what you did today. Yeah, I'm with you 100 percent, Reverend. You know, we've spoken about this uh, probably over 20 years now. And when you look at a lot of the unrest and a lot of the lack of trust, it's in New York, other states, Missouri, Baltimore, et cetera, it's a feeling that there's been a double standard and a conflict of interest where the police uh, are being monitored by district attorneys, county attorneys, and that the relationship is so intimate between the two that the DAs can't really be fair judges of the police action. And that's nothing new that's been going on for 20 years. You use the exact right word, I think, the perception of a conflict. You don't have to have an actual conflict, just the perception. And the perception in and of itself is a problem. And the perception is real. The answer, and I tried to get a law passed, and we couldn't get a law passed yet, but I did it by executive order, if you have a police officer who shoots an unarmed civilian or there is a question as to whether or not the person is armed and dangerous, that case should be removed from the local DA uh, because of the apparent conflict of interest and give that case to an independent prosecutor by our design, the Attorney General of the State of New York, Eric Schneiderman. Uh, but that will go a long way towards restoring the trust and the objectivity of the system, uh, and it has here in New York, and I'm very excited about its potential. Now, one of the things that, that I think is important here is that when we perceive it as a conflict of interest, because you're dealing with local DAs that are elected who have to use the same police force to do their cases, this takes that out of the scenario, uh, and it takes it out of the cases. And I think that we, we are next week going to see the first year since Eric Garner was the victim of a chokehold case in Staten Island, and we'll be rallying around that. But if you go from Eric Garner into Missouri, Ferguson following, into Cleveland, Tamir Rice, into Baltimore, on and on, I think this is a national model to at least begin to say, let us take all of the distrust out because, in fact, there is reasonable thinking to say the police cannot work with prosecutors they may work with every day. And I think without you saying anything that, in my opinion, is anti-police or anti the community, you answered with those mothers and civil rights groups like uh, mine, National Action Network, have been raising, is why even have the question there. I think that governors around the country should follow this. Well, I, I'm very excited about it, Reverend, because I think you're right. Look, the, uh, normally, in the past when we brought this up, right away uh, everyone got tight, because the district attorneys took it as an insult that we were saying they couldn't be independent, they couldn't be objective, because they were, quote, unquote, in bed with the police. I've spent a lot of time talking to the DAs in this state, 62 of them. I'm a former assistant district attorney to Bob Morgenthau. Manhattan District Attorney. 
I'm the former attorney general. I said, look, uh, they know as lawyers that you don't have to have an actual conflict of interest. Just the perception of a conflict of interest is a problem. And that's what this is. I think we have great DAs. Bob Johnson in the Bronx did 200 cases against police officers. But the apparent conflict is a problem. And that has to be addressed. And this is the simple solution. Remove those cases to another prosecutor. Uh, the attorney general have an office of special prosecutor. I don't think it really matters. And I think if you talk it through with the district attorneys, they realize that we have a critical problem here. It's all across the state. It's all across the country. They understand the apparent conflict. And I think if it's done the right way, you can come to a mutual uh, uh, understanding, which is essentially what we did here, Reverend. Now, I'm sure the DAs don't love it. I'm sure the police uh, don't love it. Well, the but police I don't think anyone is, will say it the is police unreasonable. Union has said, the police union says it's unnecessary. Yeah, fine. Fine. I'll take that criticism. Uh, but it, it res helps restore trust in the system. If you could have seen the mothers of uh, Eric Garner, of Sean Bell, who were here uh, with me today, you know, these are people who have fought for months, uh, years, uh, wanting some justice, some peace for their lost uh, loved one. And this is the first time they said they were part of the solution and they believe this is fair and right. If the police say it's unnecessary, I'll take that. From their point of view, maybe it's unnecessary. From the minority communities and the communities who have lost trust, it's not unnecessary. Well, and, and you're right. I mean, as you know, I've worked with all of those mothers and marched with them and all, and all they wanted was to be part of a solution. And I think that began today. We're not at the end, right. but it's the beginning. I, I need to ask you while I have you, Donald Trump, he's under a lot of fire for his statements, uh, and uh, a lot of people have taken issue with him. He's a resident and a businessman in your state. Uh, you, do, have you had any reaction to him? And what he said about uh, constituents, there's a large Latino constituency in New York, many of whom supported you. Well, if I believed in deportation, he'd have a problem uh, if he's a resident of New York State. But uh, look, uh, Donald Trump is, uh, I think he's, he's got a very strong instinct uh, for entertainment uh, as part of his business. And I think, yeah, we can talk about what it means about Donald Trump, but I think it's also relevant how Donald Trump is reading his audience. Uh, and he's in a Republican primary, and he thinks this works. Uh, otherwise, he wouldn't do it, right? Uh, Donald Trump, if, if uh, he knows anything, it, he knows marketing. Uh, so I think it says more about the audience than the entertainer, uh, that he is detecting that this is what they want to hear and that this will sell. Is uh, the state of New York doing any business with Trump, and would you sever ties if they are? I don't believe we're doing anything. All right. New York Governor Andrew Cuomo, thank you for your time tonight, and uh, I think a very big move on this one. We agree. We, as you said, we've been talking 20 years since I was in kindergarten, I think. Thank you, Governor. <laughs> yeah, almost, almost. Thank you, Reverend. <laughs>